to using Zoom, there's um, at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a little chat and you can click on chat if you want to that talk to us. That just depends on what pro, uh, platform you're using. Mine's at the top. Oh, okay. Okay, on the top or the bottom. There'll also be a um, reaction thing where you can um, give a thumbs up or an applause. This way you can give some feedback of what you're doing. So, well, I think everybody's in. I don't know how many people have um, attended our Master Gardener classes before in person. This is our first one in Zoom. So uh, bear with us as we're trying something new. The last time we had a class in person was um, the first weekend of March. And then I don't know what the heck happened, but we decided not to have any more classes for a couple of months. And here we are again. So I think we'll have classes on Zoom for a little while. Um, our next Zoom class will be um, June 6th, I think. I should have written this down, June 6th. And um, so that'll be living in the forest. We'll talk about uh, defensible space and fire. But today we're gonna talk about the Heritage Rose Garden. And um, the, uh, I don't know if everybody knows about the Heritage Rose Garden. I think a lot of you do. But uh, there's a little poll in progress on the um, on Zoom. I'm not sure exactly how to get to it. Um, Doris, how do we get to the poll? It should just open. Mine. It just should just mine, open? Yeah, mine just popped up on my screen. Oh, okay, okay. So people are... Um, We've got three questions there we're trying to find out the answers to. I'm dying to know how many people have. Okay, I've got one person who's killed a few roses. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Well, that's the way it is sometimes when you're growing things. <laughs> All right, so we want to let this poll run for just a minute and then we'll launch into the video. Sure. Okay. Looks like 33 of 41 have voted. I haven't voted. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, and we've got 44 participants. Excellent. Good morning, Tracy. It looks like I've already voted. Oh. Good morning, Sandra. Good morning. I'm, Good muting, morning. I'm muting us back. Good morning. Bill was the proud is now the proud owner of the antique tractor. Well, it looks like thirty five of forty three have answered the poll. Um, why don't we launch into our presentation then? Um, well, well, actually, do you want me to share the results? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. I can do that. Okay, so of the people on this, this call today, 80% of you have actually attended a Master Gardener class before. 20% of you, seven people, this is your first time. Well, welcome. Um, 22 of us are Master Gardeners and 13 are not. So thank you so much for attending. Experience of... Um, in growing roses. 16 of you haven't grown roses at all, heritage roses. Um, 14 say they've had a little bit of experience. Four say they've had many. And one person says they killed a few. So obviously roses really want to live. All right. Okay. Well, so if you've uh, attended the classes before, um, this is a dif different experience having them here. There's no refreshments, um, <laughs> which is always the highlight for me. <laughs> and there's no, no, there's no meeting everybody face to face. So I apologize for that. And, and hopefully later in the year, or I don't know when, we'll get these things where we're in person. But, so 
the Heritage Rose Garden is a project that was started, I don't know, several years ago. Um, Judy Wood was the leader uh, on starting this. It was um, Judy that got us interested in doing it. So we're going to hear from Judy. Judy's been a master gardener for, I think, 15 years. Shake your head if I'm right. Um, yes. 15 years. And she's been growing roses even longer before. Um, so she's very interested in roses and she's going to share some of her knowledge with us. Um, and with that, we'll, um, Doris, can you mute everybody except um, uh, me and, and Judy? Well, I'll mute myself when I'm done talking. And then Tracy, you're going to run the video. I don't know if you have to be muted or not. Welcome to the virtual tour of the Heritage Rose Garden of the Amador County Master Gardeners. As you may know, we were scheduled to have our first open garden day today. And we were so excited to be able to share this labor of love with you for the very first time. But the pandemic intervened and to keep us all safe, we are offering you this virtual tour instead. In the future, we'll be having regular open garden days and we hope you will join us in person then so you can actually smell the roses. Here in photographs taken by drone in December, you can see the layout of the garden before anything was in bloom. When we started two years ago, this space was hard clay carpeted with thick, healthy weeds. Each rose had to be planted in a gopher cage because the gopher holes were nearly as numerous as the weeds. Most of the roses are from starts, taken from the private garden of Judy Dean of Mountain Ranch. Judy Dean began collecting and propagating heritage roses 30 years ago, and now has more than 700 roses in her garden. About a third of her property burned in the 2015 Butte fire, and some of her roses burned to the ground. Because they grew on their own roots, most of them recovered. But it occurred to her and her husband, Bob, that to ensure preservation of the roses, there needed to be a second backup garden, which is where we came in. Heritage roses are classes of roses that existed before 1867, the year the first hybrid tea rose was introduced. Why are these roses important? First of all, because they're a part of our California history, but also they're often fragrant and they are hardy, drought tolerant, and disease resistant. Often found in cemeteries or at old homesteads, these old roses survived with profound neglect. No water, no rose food, no pruning, sometimes for a century. While our visit to the garden today must be virtual, the Heritage Rose Garden has one frequent guest who comes and goes as he pleases. This is Vinny, a friendly orange cat that lives next door to the garden and that always shows up to be petted. Here are a few of our roses. The Sutter Creek Catholic Cemetery rose, possibly Rosa odorata, but that has not been positively established. Odorata was bred in Yunnan, China and was imported to England in 1809. This one was planted long ago at the cemetery, where the first burial was in 1858. Madame Plantier. This lovely blush white rose is also known as the bride's rose. It blooms only once a year, but has an outstanding fragrance. The blossoms are creamy at first, becoming pure white with a little green pip or eye in the center. Marquesa Bocella. This hybrid perpetual is fragrant and repeat blooms. It came from the collection of the late Kay Polk, donated to the garden by her husband, George. After we planted it, it seemed to die, but this spring it came back to life and now looks happy and healthy. Medieval rose. We are not positive what this rose is, but it may be autumn damask. Now that it's in bloom, we'll tackle its identification. 
with 10 or 12 people propagating roses for this garden, it has been a challenge to keep the tags on every rose, but that's part of the fun. Moser House Hybrid Perpetual. We have misnamed this in the garden, but we'll be fixing that soon. It was only after it bloomed that we realized it is not the Moser House Shed Rose, which is pale blush pink. Both were found on the Moser property in Mokalami Hill, but this hybrid perpetual is deep pink. Metabolis. The single petals opened yellow, then become orange, rich pink, and finally crimson. With flowers of so many colors, it looks like brightly colored butterflies are perched on the bush. It blooms early and continuously from spring to fall. Pearl door or pearl of gold. When the flowers open, they're apricot, then they become a golden buff pink. It blooms in flushes in spring, summer, and fall, and it has a pleasing strong fragrance. Josine Hene. This deep pink rose has a strong damask fragrance. It blooms and flushes throughout the season and is described as rare today. The Cecile Bruner climbing rose is almost thornless. This rose produces large clusters of very small, perfectly shaped pink blooms with a sweet, slightly spicy fragrance. It's also known as the buttonhole rose or the sweetheart rose. Duché rose is one of only a few white china roses, and its double blooms have a fruity fragrance. It blooms throughout the summer and is a compact shrub with lovely foliage. The climbing American Beauty rose has large, fragrant double blooms of deep pink with a cupped form. A mature bush is said to produce between 500 and 1,000 blooms a year, and the strong scent is sometimes noticed even before you see the flowers. The foothill penstemon is a luminous bloomer with spikes of narrow bell-shaped blossoms of bright blue-purple. It attracts hummingbirds, butterflies, and other pollinators. This Blue Springs variety is a cultivar of the native foothill penstemon. Canyon Snow Pacific Iris. This is one of our California natives, a selection of Douglas Iris. We also have two native California roses, Rosa Californicus and Rosa Noticana. Both are small, pink, simple flowers, but both are very sweet. Our Rosa Californicus hasn't bloomed yet, but the Noticana has set out a few flowers already. One of the things you would be likely to see in our garden or in any garden, especially one with roses, is some aphids. Where you have roses, you have aphids. We check our roses at least once a week, and when we find aphids, we use a totally organic spray, plain water. With a strong stream of water, using the jet setting on our nozzle, most of the aphids are blasted right off the buds, never to return. As you can see, many of our roses are repeat bloomers, and they should be in flower much of the summer through fall. So even though you must see them virtually right now, we hope to be able to open while many of them are still blooming. We can only open when UC Davis gives us the okay. Right now, that is not expected until at least May 31st, but we hope to see you after that. Thank you. Well, thank you, Judy, for that uh, narration of the video. Uh, we'll open up for questions now. And if you can, uh, we'll try typing the questions in the chat uh, and see. Doris, were there any questions in the chat? Not that I've seen so far, no. Give me some easy ones.
Are folks having problems um, clicking questions in the, aha, uh -huh, got it. From Ann, um, do you have a favorite rose? Hmm, that's very difficult. Um, one of my favorites, I think, is the um, Rosa Odorata from the Sutter Creek Catholic Cemetery. Um, we heard yes, yesterday from Anita Clevenger that that may only bloom once. I'm not sure yet, but it's a very pale, very pretty little rose. And it had survived in the very rocky, slate-filled <laughs> cemetery for a very long time. And they decided to take it out because it was unwieldy. They took it out and it came right back. <laughs> it wants to live. It lives at my house. Dennis Miller has many of them. We both took um, bits of it back when the cemetery was considering taking it out. So I think that's my very favorite just because it's the first one I really successfully propagated on my own. Great. Okay, um, April Wall said, thank you for the great, lovely, uh, great info and lovely tour. Penny Thompson, would you unmute and explain your, your question, please? Um, it uh -oh. says what to do about this. So I'm holding up this leaf and I have a couple of weeks ago went through, I have been on three bushes. I have about 18 rose bushes in my yard, front and side. I clipped them all, bagged them up, threw it in the trash, and this week they're back. And can you hold, can you hold it closer to your camera? Up further. You're missing the cap there. Got it. And you don't see any bugs on it? No. Um, Ania, if you are still with us, can chime in. I would think it looks like mosaic disease, which can be very difficult. Anita, do you have an opinion? I would think it's black spot. Okay. I, it, this is the time of year for it. Penny, what kind of roses? Are these modern hybrid tea roses? <laughs> you don't know. You bought them somewhere, some nursery, right? At Ridge Road Nursery. Okay. I uh, particularly, a lot of the old roses aren't prone as much to black spot, but some are. Uh, some varieties of, of modern roses are more prone to it. Uh, the best thing to do is what I think you already did, which is to remove the diseased leaves and dispose of them pick up anything that's under the rose because there could be disease spores that would then splash mm. up from irrigation or uh, rain. Make sure they're fertilized. And my bet is that your leaves will look just fine uh, once it starts to get hotter. Uh, it's, it's much more prone in, in moist, warm weather, uh, but not hot. A uh, blessing we have here in California is once it gets above 90, and God knows it does, and is dry, most of the rose diseases go dormant. So I think you're fine. Thank you. Okay. Um, next on the list, Bill Weibel would like to know when this video was compiled. Ed, do you want to take that? Good idea. Yeah, we compiled uh, this week. We did the filming on... I don't know, like last Friday, and put the pieces together. Um, just uh, well, we finished it Thursday night, so it's these are recent pictures. Well, some of the pictures are old, obviously, because we had some before pictures. But okay, um, from Joan Dacey says yes. Thank you for your incredible work and an interesting video. Susan Port asks, is the rootstock of our current roses from Heritage Roses? Um, the rootstock on most modern roses seems to be Dr. Huey, which is a red rose that's not particularly pretty, but it's got a good disease resistant root. So if you ever see two colors of roses on your bush that is not a metabolist, you see a red rose plus whatever you thought you had. The red rose is the rootstock and should be cut out before it takes over. Anita, do you have anything to add to that? Well, other than that the odorata 
was used as a root stock in the 19th century right. and early 20th century. And that's one reason we often find it in the old cemeteries. It survived as a, as a root stock uh, while what was grafted onto it died. And that's the reason you want to take the root stock, Dr. Huey, or whatever you have off uh, because the rose will put its energy into the more vigorous root stock and the scion, the desirable plant that's been grafted on, will die out or weaken. And so it's good to remove the rootstock. What we find in the old cemeteries is surviving rootstock, which grows beautifully. Okay. Um, Annette Conway says, thank you for the tour. I love the difference and can't wait to watch the roses continue to thrive. Beautiful. Um, we're all waiting till this thing, till, till the rose garden will open and we can all go down and see it in person and actually smell them. We don't have smell-o-vision and it really upsets me. <laughs> um, next on the list, Tracy Cielo, Celio has um, um, added a URL for a pest note. Tracy, do you want to explain what this is? Um, I just recommend if you have roses, cut and paste and save that link because it has um, abiotic disorders and um, it would be helpful for you to, uh, anyone to utilize that in the future if you have issues at home. Okay. Cool. Um, Kathy Gerhardt to everyone says, good job everyone, looks wonderful. Can't wait for the one year and five year anniversary celebrations. The five year is going to be pretty cool. Um, Anita, you said you'd like to make a few comments? I would. Um, some of you know me. I've been the curator at the Sacramento Historic Rose Garden for many years. And at least one of the shots of, of the Nutabolus was from there. And a few of the roses that are being grown in your garden right now are from there. I, I thank the Master Gardeners for letting me do a socially distanced visit yesterday and really enjoyed seeing the garden. And we'll be glad to continue to serve as an advisor and mentor in any way I can. I'm really impressed with what you've done so far. It looked way better and further along and more in bloom than I expected. And um, so I've got, we propagated many roses from this, the historic rose garden collection for this year's open garden and rose sale, which like your tour today didn't happen in April. So we have many roses. I, I'll be working with you folks. You've already got a list of what we have. So if folks really want some heritage roses, I can hook you up uh, for your own garden. And I'm also working on hooking up your heritage rose garden with some additional roses with a focus on ones that have been collected in the foothills around you from Amador and Calaveras County in particular. And so working to uh, uh, build your collection and collaboration. I'm also on the board of the Heritage Rose Foundation. We'll be carrying information about your garden because it's always exciting to us to find a new Heritage Rose Garden that's been started. And, and looks like it's in for the long haul. I'm really impressed with how you guys have it set up. And we've been discussing whether we could do a small grant from the Heritage Rose Foundation. And I'll pick that ball back up and work on it. Uh, so good job. It was a great pleasure to come out and see it. And I'm looking forward to many returns. Thank you, Anita. And You're by the way, I'm a master gardener. It probably showed. Um, so <laughs> I, I am always happy to answer or try to puzzle out uh, disease or pest problems. Great, thank you, Anita. Um, Bobby McCaffrey is asking, might you be selling some of the propagated plants in the future? I think we answered that, um, but we didn't quite come up with a way that we would be getting that to, to users. Um, let us take the, the process offline and we'll get an email out to everyone and let you know how you might be able to obtain um, starts of these wonderful heritage roses. Is that okay? Yeah, I can, I can say that um, we were planning to sell a few of the roses at least that we've started at the plant sale, which of course did not happen in early May. Yeah. Um, and several of us still have a deck full of rose starts that we would like somebody else to be watering. So we will be trying to figure out how to get them to new owners. 
I don't think we have a process yet. Okay, we'll work on that process and get that information out to everybody. Um, next question comes from Barbara Garcia. Would Judy be willing to try to identify roses that we have no names for if we send photos? That's a very hard task and I don't think I'm up to it. Anita might be when she comes another time. Um, it takes a real pro and um, not very many of us have the knowledge and skills to do that, unfortunately. We well, can sometimes know whether it's an old rose or a new rose. Mm -hmm. Anita? Well, you, you all saw that I wasn't sure looking at roses even, is this rose in one part of the garden exactly like a rose in another part of the garden? It takes comparing, takes some study. There are uh, there once were about 30,000 roses introduced. I think there's 10,000 in commerce today. There's a lot of roses out there. If what you want identified is a modern garden rose, something that you got in a nursery, uh, your best bet's to go to a Rose Society meeting. And you've got one, I believe, that meets in Jackson. Um, yes. I, I can confirm which Rose Society is nearest to you, but uh, I've come down a couple of times to meetings uh, in your area. And those folks really should be much better able to identify modern roses than most of us master gardeners and heritage rose types. And they're a great group and they'd be very helpful on everything about roses. And we also should mention there is a website called helpmefind.com and they have a section on roses and you can at least begin to narrow it down I think by looking at similar roses on their site. Okay. I, I also mentioned there's a cup there's a Facebook group that Paul Zimmerman has that is a worldwide rose group. And I participate in it and some other Rose folks. And so sometimes you're able to get an identification or an answer, but you have to be careful because it's worldwide. And so somebody from Canada may be telling you how to ro grow roses in uh, California and their answers may be totally wrong. Another thing on that side is they don't hesitate to break out the chemicals. And we prefer uh, the organic, uh, uh, treatment of water um, or manual care, uh, the, the least invasive treatment possible as master gardeners. Great. Um, next on the list was Marlena. She says, thanks, this is a great way to share clear narration, steady vid video, and the expert response is ever helpful. I really love fragrance and hardiness. Um, and she's looking for rose starts. <laughs> um, Annette Conway also is interested in Rose Starts, and Tracy sent us the URL for the Help Me Find site. Um, Anne has another question. This was a new one to me. Um, please explain why we should have current tetanus shots when working with roses. Oh, yes, because you can get tetanus from the soil or from being pricked by a rose thorn. So we should all be up to date on our tetanus shots. Um, it's somewhat rare, but not unknown. So please go get your tetanus shot if it's overdue and you're working with roses. I, I'd like to add that there's also a very rare fungal disease that you can get from a rose thorn and, uh, or prickle, you know, they're prickles, they break off. They're not in part of the, the branch, they're part of the bark. Uh, but prickle or thorn, they can hurt, they can get embedded. Uh, what you need to do is if you get stuck and there's a thorn in there uh, or prickle, uh, get it out. Even if, if, it's, if you're scratched enough to bleed, it's probably a good idea to clean up on the spot uh, just to make sure that you've got your wound clean. Uh, very rare, but sometimes there is a fungal disease that you get uh, from being uh, uh, hurt by a rose prickle. Okay. And Anne says, thank you. You're welcome. 
Okay. Are there any other questions? We answered them all. How about that? Yay. If you are interested in some rose starts, please be sure we have your email address. And when we figure out a way to do it, we'll see what, we'll try to get them distributed and sold. Uh, I'd like to make one more comment. Uh, some of you have come down to the uh, Sacramento County Master Gardeners Harvest Day, uh, first Saturday in August. And unfortunately, this year it's going to be virtual. So you'll need to be looking out for that. I offered to do a tour of our water efficient landscape because that's one place that I, I like to spend my time in addition to the Rose Garden. And so seeing this video was very good. I, it's pretty much what I want to do with our water efficient landscape. So thank you for putting this together and having it as an example. And be on the lookout for info about our virtual uh, open garden. We're going to have our lectures that normally are there totally taped and available, as well as a number of brief videos from Master Gardeners on a variety of topics. Excellent. And Anita, thank you for joining us today because you were able to answer a lot of people's questions that I don't have the answers to. Thank you. All right. And so Tracy says, we do have everybody's email. So what we need to know from you is if you are interested in purchasing a Heritage Rose Starts. Um, so we, we can get back to you. That part's okay, but we do need to know what you were looking for. We'll try to figure it out. Okay, and, and Kathy, of course, wants to know when where the Rose Starts will be available. And Kathy, as soon as we figure that out, we'll let everybody know. Okay, any more questions? Great. I uh, do hope that we'll all be able to meet again in the not too distant future in the actual garden. But thank you, meanwhile, for joining us on this virtual tour. Oh. Oh, uh, Judy, I asked one more question in the chat. Okay. Um, you didn't really mention this. Is Can you give the, the high level view of how somebody might start their own rose from a cutting? Oh, propagation. It's fun. Um, Judy Dean suggests that the fall is the best time when you have older wood. Um, you want to take a piece that's had a bloom on it, doesn't need to still have a bloom. You can cut it back a ways, you can cut it four inches, you can cut it four feet, whatever you like. You cut that into pieces, each maybe four inches, but with at least four nodes, four little growing nodes at the base of the leaves. Break off the bottom leaves, some people use rooting hormones. Some people say it's not at all necessary. Roses seem to have quite a lot of it naturally. Stick it in a light soil or uh, vermiculite, um, something light and easy. Keep it watered but not drowned. We have found that watering from the bottom seems to work, misting seems to work. And watch for it to start to grow. Um, Pot it up into some better soil as it begins to need the food and keep it watered but not drowned. And soon you'll have a rose bush. That's how we got most of these. Cool. Anita, to add? Um, we often scrape the lower part of the yes. stem a little bit. Uh, maybe like three little, use a, a knife works or a little razor blade. Um, and just expose the, the cambium layer. So you're taking off the bark and exposing the green. And we've been propagating down in the greenhouse in, in cooperation with Kasumas River College. And we've noticed that where the roots come and the, the, is often out of where those scraped areas are. So that seems to really spur um, uh, the roots to grow. We do use a rooting hormone. We use dip and grow. Uh, and that's based on Dr. Malcolm Manners and his studies of what works and 
Uh, he's from Port at Southern College. Uh, but I do, you know, roses want to live and they want to grow. And so uh, we were talking about, you know, the, the people hear about the grandmas just stuck it in the ground when they were pruning and, and sometimes they grow. Um, so we do do a propagation class, God willing, and coronavirus willing, uh, Governor Newsom willing, maybe we'll be able to do it again in September. And y'all are welcome to come down. We do it in the Old City Cemetery. Excellent. Thank you. Cool. Um, and there are some more questions. Oh, good. Um, Nancy Alon says, thank you. Look forward to more Master Gardener Zoom meetings. Anne has another question. Can you do also describe characteristics that are important for identifying a rose? Oh, yes. Judy Dean actually worked with another woman on a booklet, which we have copies of. And it goes through so many of the things you look at to try to identify a rose. You want to look at the leaves very carefully. The first time I found a rose that I didn't know that appeared to be a heritage rose, I sent a picture of the blossom to Judy Dean. And she said, listen, knucklehead, I need more than the picture of the flower. So you look at the leaves. Are they smooth on the edge? Do they have wide serrations? Do they have narrow serrations? Just exactly what do the leaves on this bush look like? What do the prickles look like? We've learned that a moss rose has hundreds if not thousands of tiny, tiny prickles that feel very soft along the stems. Others have big sharp ones. Some of the prickles point down, some point up, some are very big, some are very small. So Judy's book has pictures and you check off which, which kind of prickle you're looking at. How many petals does the rose have? Does it have an eye in the middle? A little, a little pip in the middle? Uh, there are all of these characteristics that you need to look at in order to identify it. And still, you know, three or four of us sat around one day with a rose that we knew to begin with and sat down with Judy's checklist and we still couldn't come up definitively with that rose. It is a very difficult process. It takes quite an expert. It's certainly somebody more expert than we. So those characteristics are um, out there and if you are interested in particularly learning those, I will be happy to share them. I have them scanned in and can email them to anybody who wants those pages from the Judy. I will also share an article with you um, that you could maybe post out and we should have it on our Cemetery Rose website as well. It's an article called What Old Rose Is This? And so what it does is it talks about some of those characteristics like the way that the prickles are, uh, you can at least tell maybe the class of the rose. Is it a damask? Is it a a uh, hybrid tea, you know, just what is it that you're seeing there? And so I'll share that because uh, the glossiness and texture of the leaves, uh, the shape and color of the prickles and how they're placed, all of those maybe don't lead you to the exact cultivar of the rose, but it can give you the class. Um, Anita, is, does that, is that article perhaps online? It is. Um, it's posted, I think, on the Heritage Roses Group website. And um, I can get, um, I'll, I'll find a way to share that and I can get it to Judy or okay. to Susan or to you, whomever you want. Excellent. Yeah, if you can get it to Judy, then Judy can get it to me and we can get it out to everybody because that sounds like a really interesting booklet. Yeah, and it's, it's very specialized. It's about Heritage Roses, but that's the subject. Yeah. Okay, um, Gail Sweet has um, an investigative opportunity for you, Judy. Um, okay. She, <laughs> she says, there's a beautiful bank of gold roses growing along a fence way out French Bar Road, totally neglected. Wondering if it might be very, very old, it might be worth a look. Do you know anything about those little roses? I don't. I'll have to drive out there and have a look. It sounds very interesting. It's amazing once you get started with heritage roses, you can't go through town without digging out the Pioneer Cemetery 
wandering around, seeing if there are any roses. You're driving down the road and you see a rose out of the corner of your eye and you have to pull over. It's, um, it becomes quite an obsession. I can only compare it to when I learned to hunt mushrooms and couldn't go buy a good sized mushroom on the side of the road. So I will certainly be driving out French Bar Road soon. Thank you. Well, cool. thank you. Okay, anybody else? I think we have it. I, I guess I have a question. Will your tour be posted on your Master Gardener website or accessible in some way? Tracy? The, the video? I'll Post put video. the link in the comments. Actually, I posted the YouTube video on our webpage uh, this morning, so. Good, yes because I want to share it out with our other Rose volunteers, as well as all of us master gardeners who are working on making videos for Harvest Day. Yes, I think Ed Bass did an outstanding job on that. Absolutely, video. congratulations. Yeah, Anita, you can email me and I'll, I'll tell you the software I used and get you started in the right direction there. Okay, thank you. Well, we do have the Sacramento County's launched into how they're going to edit and what they're going to do. It's up to me to get the footage and the script and and oh, okay, so you got somebody to put and it together. And then they're going to put it can. together. Thank good. God. Uh, but but yeah, knowing what you use is good. Thank you. Okay. Um, I do not. Tracy put another. Um, link in the chat window and I don't see any more questions so if you've got any questions now is the time to do to to bring them up I have a question for Tracy um, when you we're doing these zoom meetings and you put links in the chat I'm like paying attention to the meeting itself. Is there any way to go back to see those links or do we have to immediately go and save those links during the meeting? You can cut and paste them during the meeting, Penny, but I can also send you the chat. I get a uh, email with all the chat in it. I can share that with you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, and, and for what it's worth, I've been pulling them out as she's been putting them in and um, we'll have documents that she can, pro that can be emailed out to you guys. Excellent. And the links have been great. It's been really nice to have those as we go. Tracy, you're muted. Great, thank you. And it's been a pleasure to have you here along um, with Judy, Anita. Thank you for your expertise and assistance. It's so helpful. Well, thank you all for this uh, really enjoyable virtual tour of our garden. I do hope to see you all in the garden soon. Once Sorry, I had, a, I had a question, Carolyn. Um, so is the tour of, um, posted on YouTube now? Yes, yes, it is. And if you go to chat um, right now and pull that link, It'll take you straight to our web page that has all the information about our heritage roses and the YouTube video. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Well, if that's everybody's uh, questions are addressed, we can wrap it up. Um, June 6th at this time at nine o'clock on June 6th, we'll have our next um, virtual classroom uh, on living, uh, living with fire and, and preparing your garden for defensible space and preparing for fire. I forget the official title what that was, but uh, fire wise gardening or some title like that. Well, that'll be in landscaping, but... two weeks. I think it's June 6th in two weeks, three weeks. Yeah. Three weeks. And if you, had, if you had the printed schedule that we had previously published, there was a class on May 23rd. Um, we won't be giving that class. So um, maybe next year we'll dust it off and give it then next year. Well, thank you all for coming and uh, you have a great day.
get out there and smell the roses, I guess. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Yeah, good job, Ed. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Bye. Bye. Well done.